everybody. What's going on? This is Josh Wilson, and this is the Big Dog Podcast. I got a fun uh, old friend now at this point, I guess. Yeah. How long have you been working together? What, four it's a, years? Yeah, it's probably been uh, it's probably been about three years now. Okay, three years. Yeah. Man, it seems Just a lot feels, longer. Feels a lot longer, doesn't it? I hope that's for a good for a good thing, not a bad thing. No, I think it's a good thing. That's awesome. Well, guys, I'm I'm really excited to have a, a good friend of mine. Um, you know, he's he he's become a friend over the years. Uh, started out working together, you know, through the business, um, and just a smart guy. He's been a huge asset to my businesses over the years, and. Um, he's in town today. Uh, we're working on some projects and stuff. I said, man, we got to get you in the studio <laughs> and um, introduce you to the the world and, and our audience and um, do some things. So I got Scott Richardson here with Canine Cloud Marketing um, in the studio. He yeah. handles all of our you know websites and, and, and web-based marketing and all the stuff that I really don't understand. I just know it's vital. Yeah. And I know when I started working with you, uh, we made a lot more money. So, well, the less, you know, the better it keeps <laughs> job security for me. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Just, <laughs> just keep billing me. And yep. it's like, what did I pay? Yep. For? Whatever. It, yeah. it makes sense. The numbers <laughs> add up. So we'll make it work. Well, Scott, look, I mean, I'm really excited to have you, you know, here with us today. Tell us a little bit about your, your background and how you got, how you ended up yeah. here and doing what you're doing in the business. Yeah. Well, it's an honor. Um, truly you're one of the, uh, uh, one of the clients that I have that I have just massive amounts of respect for. So, um, I'll pay you I'm, later. I'm a little you. bit jealous. Well, yeah, <laughs> actually you Well, a couple more days, your draft yeah. will come out, but yeah, <laughs> you'll pay me eventually. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I, so me, God, my background. So, um, I'm, I'm what you call a scanner. Okay. I, I saw a Ted talk not too long ago and I was like, Oh my God, that's me it's kind of the ADHD, but it's ADHD in, in professional career terms right? where I get what I need out of a profession and I got to move on okay? because I just don't have anything to learn anymore. I may have more to give. I just don't have any more to learn. Sure. And I get, I, I, I just get all nervous and I'm like, I can't or nervous and bored at the same time, yeah. which is a, a bad combination, but, <laughs> but it gets me, it gets me moving. And so I came out of school a long time ago um, and I was a journalist. I started my career um, in radio and then television news. I worked in a, uh, a radio studio on the weekends as an intern at six in the morning until 10. No I, would I would run the Casey Kasem Top 40 show, which in those days was on a reel to reel. Yeah. And then, you know, CD came out you know, after my first six months of working so that it was, it would come on a CD and I would hit play. And then after 20 minutes of songs, I would do a weather report and then hit play again. <laughs> and the next track would run, but that was, um, and I, and I would live my life for those four to eight hours on the weekends yeah. doing my radio gig, which I loved. Well, the TV station was downstairs and I got really jealous of those folks, you know, and what they were doing. So then I wanted to get into TV and I became a photographer uh, and was, God, I just loved being out like chasing, you know, TV news in the 90s and, you know, early, early 2000s was the days of like breaking news and when yeah. live trucks and satellite trucks and the technology, I loved all of that. It was so exciting to get out and, uh, you know, cover anything that anyone in the community was talking about. I usually got to go see, okay. which made me feel important as a 20 year old kid. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so I get that, you know, uh, but it also meant going to city council meetings, which I understood nothing <laughs> of anything that was going on. But, um, I think that's the point of this. I got, yeah, I think you're right. I think it's just make a, sure it's everybody exercise. stays confused. Everyone and needs to feel important behind on. the desk and everyone out there. Yeah. Yeah. That, just shut exactly up. Your 30 it. seconds are up. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. The floor recognizes you for the next 20 seconds. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I wanted to do, I, I knew I wanted to move into management. And so I kind of got into some newsroom management okay. stuff and became an assignment editor, which meant now I could tell the photographers and the reporters what to go do, you know? So it kept me in the loop with everything that was going on, but it, it really started to get me at my multitasking, mm -hmm. which there's some debate, I guess, on what, if that's even a possibility in life. It's got to be because right. I would have a phone in one ear. I'd be, you know, typing a 
typing a uh, uh, not a text message, but we had a little keyboard that would go to someone's beeper. Sure. So I could I could beep the reporter and tell them where to go. Oh yeah. While I'm on the phone with the you know the police or whatever, like hey, here's the address. So it was it was an exercise, and it just was like um, this amazing adrenaline type thing because it was just constant, sure. like breaking news. We're doing this. We're doing that. Everything's changing. Now we're gonna go here, and you know, so that as a 20 year old kid just out of school, that was amazing. Yeah. Um. And then it just wasn't amazing anymore. <laughs> you know, as, as you do in, in that business, you just burn because it's think about news. It's just, right. it's, it's so, um, I don't always jump on the bandwagon of news is always so negative. It's so negative and it, it is, I get it, but stories need to be told. And, you know, so I, I see the value in good journalism. Sure. Um, but I just got tired of it. And it's certainly on a yeah. local level. I got, I just, it was, wasn't, wasn't fun. And I wanted to own my own business. Okay. Um, I had decided that at some point and I bought a gym, which was completely crazy at the time because I, I had no gym experience. My only experience in fitness was the fact that I played basketball and played baseball and played foot, played, you know, every sport there was. So how the hell was. did you end up buying a gym? I knew I wanted to own a business and I found a, a business broker that was like, Oh, well, here's this, um, you know, book distributorship you could buy. Here's a flower store you could buy. Here's a gym that you could buy. Yeah. And I'm like, Hey, wait a minute. What, go back to that last one. What's that? And the more I got into it, the more I kind of, I'm like, you know, I always wanted to be involved in sports and athletics and sure. I always, always had been completely not in love with the product of fitness as more sports than fitness. Right. Um, but I really love the business side of it. And, and, and as I kind of grew in that, in that industry, just absolutely fell in love with the business side of things. Hmm. Um, and they always say, you know, five years, if you can make it five years, yeah. like then you're, you know, you're good. Cause that's the hardest part. Sure. Well, year five, I went bankrupt okay. All right. <laughs> because I had, I had a big gym. Yep. And then I had three little franchise locations. Oh, okay. And I bought my big gym from the guys that started the Anytime Fitness franchise. All right. So I bought that gym from them. They took that money and started their franchise. So gotcha. um, from location one. Well, then I bought three of those locations and, you know, ran those. Was able to sell them, but the big gym failed. Okay. Uh, older gym, whatever. So tail between my legs, decide... <laughs> What's going to be my next thing? And I right. knew I wanted to own something again. And, um, you know, I managed uh, some bigger box gyms, the 24-hour fitness, the sure. gold gyms, like some of those big box chains. Um, really, I'll tell you what I learned there is mostly about sales and marketing, mostly sales, and realized that my biggest downfall in my first my big gym, my first business, because it doesn't gym market. It doesn't, it doesn't right. matter. Sales is, is always the lifeblood. Even if you're a one person, hundred percent business sales is everything, Yep. you know? Uh, and I, and I learned that, learned how to do it, how to train. I, I don't particularly like it. Um, but I love training it and teaching it. And I loved that. And I thought, God, what do I, and then I realized that I'm, you know, more of a soft sell approach, a relationship based, sure. you know, um, salesperson got into the marketing side of it and was like, that's what I want to do. I'm introverted by nature. So sales wasn't really my thing, but the marketing side, I could sit behind a computer, I could do it in my home. Yeah. And I'm like, this is what I want to do. Started learning SEO and I'm, okay. a, I'm purely YouTube educated and, um, you know, have an advanced degree from there. Just yeah. I followed every guru there was sure. in search engine optimization. And I had a little bit of background in some web design and stuff. Started a marketing company um, while I was still employed yeah. um, with my gym. And just whenever I could build a website, whenever I could do some ads for someone or social media or what, anything, you know, and I would charge anything you know, as much as I could, right? Sure. but whatever I was comfortable pitching, I would pitch. And, yeah. and if I could get it, I, I didn't care. Like, you know, and then excited. as that portfolio began to build and you had, yeah. you know, now the, the reputation, now you can get a little more steady on what those fees are and well, what the exactly. services are worth. Because mm -hmm. in the beginning, it's, you know, I, I almost go back to like when we started, when I started training dogs, man, I'd, I'd almost train these dogs for free mm -hmm. because I'm learning so much with every dog that 
I was able to work with and, and put my hands on. Yep. So I kind of almost imagine it's like, Hey, can I help you with your website? Yeah. I throw 50 bucks my way. Hey, yeah. can I, can I look at this, yeah. you know, Facebook campaign for you? You know, I'll just put it together for you. If it works, yep. maybe we'll talk something long term yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Is it those type of experiences that yeah. help to build the, the business early on? I, I still do it. I, I okay. still do it. In fact, um, I, I just feel like it, and you're one of the people that preaches this the most. Like, I, I feel like there is, if you can create a sense of service in your business, mm-hmm. um, even if you're not a service oriented business, right. if there's a, a, a mentality of service where your, your why, what you do, why you do it and all of that is purely, you know, comes from a good, uh, honest place of, I want to help. Yeah. Um, you, you just can't help, but be successful. You know, even if, God, e- even if your business financially doesn't like you'll be successful. Sure. You know? And it, so to this day, it's, it's how can I help your business the most? Um, yeah, I, I got to make money in it, sure. but I also need to build trust in a relationship so that, you know, so that you're going to go to your next you know, uh, dog trainer meeting sure. and talk about, God, you, you really got to talk to this guy, you know, that right. kind of thing. He's just gone above and beyond. And and that sort of, I, it, it has to come from a good place. And, and, you know, I, I still like, like services, like I'll build a website and be like, you know what, I'm going to host it for you for free. Right. I'll put it on my servers. I mean, I pay hundreds of dollars a month for servers and people already have GoDaddy accounts and I just won't let them host their right. websites yeah. on GoDaddy yeah, anymore because sure. it's so much easier for me. It's a better product. It's more secure. It's yep. faster. It's a better user experience, all of this stuff. So I'm like, don't worry about it. I'll pay for it. I just right. want, but because I know they may not see the benefit in that. Like it's, you know, right. whatever. And, and well, so they understand what they understand. They don't understand the difference. Like, well, it's being hosted by a server. Yeah. It's, yeah I mean, it's, you have a server. Yeah. They have yeah. a server. Right. I'm not paying anything additional for this server. So why do I need, right. you know, we don't, we understand what we do. Mm-hmm. We don't, I don't understand half the crap you do, right. which is why every couple of months, like, I'm like, Hey Scott, yeah. is there, <laughs> is, is anything broken? Right. Are, are our phone systems down? Are our leads down? Is everything yeah. crashed? Is everything yeah. failed? Did my yeah. credit card not go through? Right. Hey, Scott, you know, we only got 180 calls this week instead of 205. Is there a problem? It, yeah. You know, it, and that's how much I pay attention to it, but I can't keep up with trying to understand all the metrics. I mean, you're right. here in town today, which I super appreciate spending yeah. the day with me, right. but because I got on the phone with you last week and said, man, we've got some outstanding projects mm-hmm. that are outstanding because of me. And I was like, I just got some questions about stuff. I need to get some stuff updated. Can we just sit down and walk through it? Yeah. Cause I'm a super visual person. Like yeah, I need I it in too. front of me. We start mm-hmm. emailing back and forth. It gets buried in the email yeah. and now it's not a priority when the, the big things really are a priority yeah. for me, but they just get buried. Yeah. So again, you know, this is the type of guy Scott is we're on the phone call Friday night. Mm-hmm. You know, I text you, I said, you spending time with your family or are you just bullshit? And like, what's yeah, going on? Tonight? Like, what is it like nine o'clock yeah. at night, 10 o'clock? Yeah. Cause I'm driving, driving to, and, to Northern mm-hmm. Virginia and we're on the phone for an hour, mm-hmm. you know, with my web guy on a Friday night, yeah. takes the time for a call. We have conversation. And really it was just because I needed to ask him to come down and spend some time. Sure. And here we are, you know, six days later yeah. and you're in town for the week and it's not a convenient drive. What is it? Four or five hours? It's about four hours. Yeah. yeah. From where you're at and you're here and, and that's awesome. And I yeah. think that's a, it, that is a value add. Yeah. Like you, I would hundred percent agree. You know, you always look to add value sure, and bring value. You know, where can I add value? Where can I help you? Um, and even one thing that I always thought was unique with you in the beginning, you came to me with things that I didn't one know were a problem mm-hmm. Two, you're like, Hey, you know, I went on the back end. I looked at this, we built this, we've been running some, some comparisons. Yeah this is where there's some deficiencies. We should try this. Mm-hmm. If you're okay with it, I'm going to go ahead and put this in. Yep. Don't worry about it. Let's yep. just see what happens. Right. And boom, I'm seeing improvement or mm-hmm. you were able to very practically explain to me <laughs> the why behind it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, that makes sense. Let's see. And now I'm seeing these things and it wasn't, Hey Josh, here's this package. This is what you need to do. Yeah. It's X amount of dollars. 
No, it was just, you took your time, mm -hmm. your initiative, threw some proposals out of things we should look at. The, my favorite ones are the ones you already did. And you're like, hey, this is what yeah. I'm seeing. Yeah. If we actually make this change X, Y, and Z, yeah. you're going to benefit. Right. And sure enough, we've benefited. Yeah. You know, and, and done well from that. And now we have a much more uh, consistent relationship. And mm -hmm. as your business has grown, you know, you've transitioned some billing models and you're like, hey, Josh, I, this is yep. what we're switching to. Yep. You know, I've got support staff. My, my packages need to change on pricing a little sure. bit. Have I ever beat you up over it? I ever yeah. pushed back on it. Mm -mm. I'm like, okay, so that's just billing automatically. Like, what are we? Yeah. It's yeah, there. yeah. But you did such a good job. And I think this is really an important lesson for um, any industry, but people starting out, you did such an incredible job early on in our relationship, establishing value. Mm -hmm. And for me, I didn't care if you said you're, you're, you have your masters through YouTube on all this. Yeah. Stuff. Right. What does it matter to me? Bottom line, right. is it working? Right. Is it effective? Right. Because your master's from YouTube is still 5,000% more valuable than me trying to hack at it sure. and do it myself. Right. So you did such a good job for me, and I know several others, you know, establishing that value early on. And I'm excited as your business has grown. And I get yeah. that you got to bring on more people and, sure. and your services are have gone up nominally. Like, a small amount, right. you know, right. you're not beating anybody over the head right? because you're a fair person. You're a good person, but it's not an issue. It's not a discussion yeah. because you already established the value to, sure. to my business. Right. You know? And so it kind of a cool thing about, about yours, like when you had an opportunity, you talked about added value again, you know, years ago you connected with Nick. Yeah. All right. And Nick, for those who don't know, is a great friend of ours. Yep. Um, you know, he actually started off these canine training. I guess, gosh, I guess we're going on 10 years now. Yeah. Um, great guy, Nick White. Um, for those who don't know, you should know. Yeah. Uh, follow him on interest, Instagram. Yeah. I think it's Nick yeah. White canine. Um, something like that. You'll find him. He's got the blue check. He's cool like that. <laughs> so anyway, um, you know, and that's how I got connected with Scott. Right. Because you started out doing some work for him, doing a good job. And now you have a large client base within yeah. our off-leash network. Yeah that opened up a specialty segment that probably wasn't even on your radar originally. Right. Completely not. Uh, just, it, and, it, and honestly, I remember, I remember getting the call from Nick um, on some random, it was probably a Friday night at nine o'clock. Cause that's how Nick runs too. Yes. Um, <laughs> and, or one in the uh, morning. Hey, do you do, you know, do you do pay-per-click? Because I was heavy into SEO and, you know, web design and you know, stuff like that. Um, and, but I was an agency, right? right. So I'm, I'm an agency. So of course I do pay-per-click. Sure. And, and at the time I had one other pay-per-click client Yep. when Nick White called me. Um, and keep in mind, this is, you know, Nick White that has hundred some locations, right. you know, nationwide. Now it's, they're not, he doesn't own them all, but he owns the franchise. That's, like right. it's his, that's his baby. And there's a hundred of them. And he calls me and asks if I do pay-per-click. I yeah, yes, you're darn I do. right. I do. I do a lot of yeah. it. <laughs> well, and and I joke about being YouTube educated, but nobody has a degree from any university in SEO. You're right. Or you know, so or one that matters it, by the time they finish the I degree. I have an MBA in international finance, but yeah. uh, sure, yeah. You know, but what does that who mean cares? to me as a dog <laughs> trainer who just wants to get my phone to ring a little right. bit more? Yeah. So he asks if I do pay per click, and I'm like, of of course I do, and yeah. then, um. You know, he's like, well, let me give you one location and see how you do. And then I'll give you another. And then if that, you know, if that works out, maybe we'll open you up to some of the other folks. And it took about six months. Yeah. Um, crushed it. Just sure. absolutely surprised myself, but I spent so much time and so much, you know, it's funny, you're, you're the, I know you record these, but your podcast episode that came out today was on knowing your numbers. Oh yeah, sure. I would wake up every single morning and I would look at, like one location, every single metric and what it meant and how, it, not what it meant, but not the definition of, but what does it mean in the context of Nick's business at sure. that location? What is the click-through rate or the cost per conversion and all these different metrics that I live and die for. And I would just study them and study them and study just for one location. Yeah. And th th that was my morning was just learning 
y'all's business. Sure. Yeah. Um, through the numbers. Cause pay-per-click isn't pay-per-click isn't pay-per-click across the board. Right. You know, different, with different, different industries and right. all of this stuff. So yeah. just cause somebody necessarily hits home runs with right. a business right. on pay-per-click doesn't mean they're the go-to. Somebody calls me with a t-shirt shop and they want to run ads. I get real nervous because sure. I don't know that business. Right. Um, I get, you know, you say, Hey, I got a, a new location. So-and-so I'm like done. Right. Like I, I can, I can set that up, you know, give me a I've couple done hours and, and yeah. we're done. Yeah. Yeah. And we're you up got and a question, running. Jonathan. Yeah. As someone who's not too familiar with running ads and yeah. uh, search engine optimization, could you explain pay-per-click? Yeah, that's, that's, that's a good that's point. Fair. We're just um, throwing terms. Yeah. Well, see, you're, you're far too educated and you're me. <laughs> My <laughs> in, fault, in everybody. This, in all of this right now. PPC. Um, <laughs> so yeah, pay-per-click, um, the way that we run it is Google ads. Yeah. Uh, pay-per-click being, it, it can be Google ads. It can also be mean social media advertising, Facebook ads, because you're paying by the click. Um, in some cases you pay for the number of views that you get, like in Facebook and things like sure. that. But um, f- mostly for the off-leash folks, it's all Google ads. Yep. And your ad can appear a million times. And if you get three clicks, you pay for three clicks. Right. So um, that's the pay-per-click. Now the search engine optimization is the flip side of that. It's the traffic that you might get from Google that you don't pay for. Yeah. Well, you pay for the SEO service, but it's how, you know, how people find you. You know, if, if you're a brand new dog trainer, you know, you're not going to be on the first page of Google when right. someone searches dog trainer near me. It's going to take you a minute to get there for your brand to be recognized. And Google has an algorithm that decides who the top dog is. Sure. Yep. Pardon the pun, but that's, you know, you're the top dog. But oh, thank you. Th- it takes Google a minute <laughs> to recognize that. Yeah. You know? um, well, people ask me, they'll be like, Josh, you know, we, we were looking at some of your stuff and we Googled dog training and they're in some other part of the state or or maybe another state. Yeah. And they were like, Hey, you're the whole first page of Google. It's like, how did you do that? I'm like being really consistent and really intentional for eight years. Like, yeah, (laughs) for real. And and that's it. And the thing is anybody could take that away from me Mm -hmm. if they want to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. But now like when when you Google that and and like you type in dog training near me and you're anywhere in the vicinity of Hampton roads, Mm -hmm. You know, we have the, the top ad. Yep. We have the top uh, Google map. Yep. The top Google my business. Mm-hmm. Then we're the top organic. organic. Then my secondary site, I think, is the second organic. Mm-hmm. And so there's, what are there, 10? Well, 10, then 10 your Facebook. On the first page. Yeah. Your Facebook page. Then there's page. Facebook. We'll and then there's our, I think there's our hiring pages. And there's Yelp and your, yeah, all everything. Of those. Yep. I think nine is, if there's 10, 10. organic options mm-hmm. on each Google page, mm-hmm. we're nine of them. Yep. And the other one is some other company that compiles a ton of dog training businesses mm-hmm. and they, they, like a broker. Bark or it, something. Yeah. yeah. And you click that, we're the top on their link <laughs> as yeah. well. Yeah. And I don't say that to like beat my chest or anything, but it is a, a benefit. You know, I'm trying to explain this for like other business owners. I don't yeah. care what your industry is. Yep. You can't force that. You uh-huh. really can't force that. And even with the ads, right. you know, it, Just because you set up an ad doesn't mean you're going to pop up first. Right. You know, when we first started, there might have been one other company that was using Google ads for dog training. Mm -hmm. Now, every one of you jokers better be doing it if you're not, you know, because my team's good. Yeah. And I'm advertising. So, like, not flexing, just saying you should be doing it. Yeah. Right. And whatever your industry is, you should be doing it. Because the other part of it is if you do it right. Cause people talk about the cost They're like Josh. And I think this is a good thing to share mm, with, you know, mm-hmm. the, the startup businesses that are out there, you know, or, or other local small businesses. Yeah. I set up some ads. I've been spending five bucks a day and I'm just not seeing anything from it. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that? Cause we spend a little more than $5 a day little. and some industries, maybe that could be mm-hmm. a, a good budget point. Sure. But can you talk a little bit about how just cause you're running an ad doesn't mean that there's more to it than just turning it on and throwing a random dollar amount. Boy, at it. There's so much to it. Yeah, right? there really is. Uh, what it, are some key things that you think what you would throw out regards to like the spend on pay-per-click for, to help people understand effectiveness? I really think it's important to know, uh, know what the different <laughs> metrics are, know what those numbers are, because that'll help you kind of assess, okay, what's my strategy then? Yeah. Right. So, 
Um, if you're a dog trainer, you know that there's probably, I mean, we run, <coughs> excuse me, probably 15 keywords consistently, no sure. matter what location in the country it is, we yeah. know that these are the most popular keywords. And then some markets might be a little bit different, but yeah. you know, it's usually dog training, Hampton roads, name of the city. Right. right. So you understand what those keywords that you're advertising for when, so when someone searches that, um, you as a marketer or as an advertiser, you're, you place a bid on that search. Right. So you got to understand the psychology of it. So if I want to win that search, I might have to pay $5. Right. Excuse me. Man, look, that stuff I put in the water is starting to hit. Mm -hmm. (laughs) They've got him. Got me. (laughs) (sighs) Sorry, Kelly. He won't be home. See, (laughs) I sit in my basement and work. I don't talk to people. God, this is why. That sounds so creepy for a web guy. Right? Isn't that horrifying, Jonathan? Hey, Last thing I want to hear, I sit in my basement uh, and talk to yeah, people. There's someone out there that's just running ads and understands how Google works, <laughs> just sitting in his basement staring that's at it. a screen. That's it. But it's a really big screen. Thanks for listening. Yeah. <laughs> They're absolutely watching on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we need more people watching on YouTube. I will say that every week until we start to see Oh, it. my gosh, this guy. I only watch it on YouTube. Oh, well, I appreciate it. Unless Thank I'm you. driving. So does my grandmother, but even then, believe it or not. Sometimes I'll have the YouTube version up. Okay. I'm just kind of sitting on my phone, like on my dash. Yeah. I, I know that my son watches on YouTube and my yeah. grandmother watches on YouTube. Yeah. You have no idea how much I appreciate all three of you. Yeah, well, <laughs> that, those are your consistent, you can count on those views. Man, we love you all. We'll have to do something special for the YouTube crew. Yeah. Here, here from the beginning. There's one more person comments every single week on the on the YouTube videos, the and YouTube. I'm forgetting her name. But well, we'll look it up. We'll yes. find oh, yeah. out who that is. You got to give, give a, a shout, shout out to her. It's probably like my mom who's like best friend somewhere in the country. Like, yeah. Who knew YouTube was going to be hitting it with like the, you know, 80 plus crew? Yeah, I can't believe they flag, Scott. flagged our videos for content. I feel like we should bring that up because people will be hearing a different intro on YouTube. Oh, now. yeah, guys. Really? So, yeah, pay attention to that. We had a little, you know, snag this week. So let us know if you like it or not. I mean, not yeah. that I really care if you like the intro or not because it kind of gets me in the vibe. So <laughs> I need to like it, but I hope you like it too. It's your intro music. So anyway, the, the pay-per-click piece. So one of the things with that, so they bid on it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so you say, yeah, I'm willing to pay $5 to be sure. you know, the, the number one because you're going to get the most clicks if you're the top ad. Right. But, yeah, man, if you're starting out, you're not going to pay $5 sure. for one, cl- you know, maybe you're only willing to spend $1.50. Right. So you you might still be at the top, but you'll be the third one down. So sure. you're not going to get as many clicks, but the ones you do get are going to cost you less. Sure. Or if you only say 50 cents, you're going to be at the bottom of the page. You're not going to get as many clicks. Right. You know, if at all some days, but the ones you get, yeah. you're only going to pay 50 cents. For and at a certain so point, you probably you have like a that. balance of the return, right? Like you can't, yeah. you can keep spending more, but that doesn't necessarily equate to more clicks. And that's the next thing is you've got it. You've got to have, you know, you've got to understand your positioning then on the page and what yeah. that's going to mean in terms of the volume of clicks and how much you're going to pay for each click. Right. But now you also have to understand that, Oh, by the way, I need a good copywriter who's going to write a good ad. Mm-hmm. Right. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, and now you can af- judge the effectiveness of the ad by how many uh, we click through rate. Sure. Is, right. Yeah. So if I got a terrible ad, it's not going to get as many clicks. Right. Then I got to send them somewhere. Well, I'm going to send them to the web. Everyone, you know, you send them to the website. Well, do you send them to the website or do you send them to a special page on the website right. that's optimized to get a response? 100%. So maybe you don't yep. just send them to the website. You send them to what we call a landing page. Well, that landing yeah. page is designed to get you a call or an email and that's it. Yeah. And that's that's something different that we didn't always do. Mm -mm. And then as that became more of a a strategy, we started making those changes. And the thing is, guys, like we're talking about stuff that, that, that we do, but this applies to anything and everything. And you, you can design these landing pages, which are Mm not incredibly expensive to create, Mm -hmm. um, you know, really template based and, um, you know, and it's to speak to what that search was and, Just give you an opportunity. And if you, if you're selling the, the best flowers you, know, you have the best flower shop in, yeah. in Roanoke, mm-hmm. you know, for instance, yeah. like you would build your ad around that. And you know, why do people buy flowers? They're celebrating. They're yeah. saying they're sorry. Cause the yeah. dude screwed up yeah. there. It's a, it's a funeral condolences. I mean, there's very specific things where people are buying flowers. Right. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, the last thing you want is the person who, 
is like looking to order flowers because uncle Bob passed away and they do a search for a local florist and you're just, you know, they're like funeral arrangements and yeah. it pops up like happy birthday. Yeah. Congratulations on graduation. Celebration. Our happy 70th <laughs> anniversary. Like no one wants to see that shit. Like right. uncle Bob just died. Everybody's yeah. upset. So, right. right. So, you know, it, it's like, you got to build, if they search for, a funeral arrangement, you probably mm-hmm. want what your ad points to, yeah. to support yep. that moment in life. They're same going business, through. same flower shop, two right. very different customers. Yeah. And they shouldn't see the same. And the lady page. who's like, Hey, we're wilding out for our bachelorette party. We got to get this. <laughs> that page is going to look a little different than little Uncle different. Bob's funeral page. Mm-hmm. Right. Hopefully. And I feel like people don't think about that. Yeah. And if they're running ads, so, and this is where I think it's super important to have a professional that you work with. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of people out there that, that do what you do. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of people that do what I do. Yeah. Um, not everybody does these things equally. Right. And guys, when you don't understand this stuff and you're just like, well, Josh is saying we need to do ads. Well, I'm, I'm saying you should look into it. Right. I'm saying you should consider it. Right. What I'm absolutely saying you should not do is do it yourself right. because you see this, just Google anything and click on an ad right. and you're wondering what the hell just happened. Yeah. It's a, it's a broken link. Yeah. It's a, a website that's super dated. It's, and no one's feeling good about that process. And that's yeah. where working with a professional really in anything that you do, yeah. you know, is a difference between trying to do it yourself. You know, I got a leak at the house. Yeah. I'm not an idiot, but I'm not super intelligent <laughs> right. and I can figure most <clears throat> things out, but I'm probably not gonna be messing with the leak. Right. I'm not a roofer. Right. Could I get the water to stop coming in? Probably for a moment. Mm-hmm. I can put a tarp on but it. But if I want it to be done fixed and done, fixed, yeah. you get the person who actually does it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, um, for sure. That, that's, that's key. And, you know, one of the things I always focus on, and I don't know why, when I'm looking at, you know, our reporting and stuff like that is mm-hmm. I'm all, and I've had people in the past tell me, I don't think you've ever told me this, but I've had people in the past tell me that it doesn't matter, but I've always been very concerned about the capture rate. Mm-hmm. You know, the capture, cause I'm yeah. like, if there's a hundred thousand people searching for, you know, carpet cleaning and I'm a carpet cleaning business, mm-hmm. how do I capture, how do I get a hundred percent of that opportunity? Right. I want a hundred thousand people to see my ad. Mm-hmm. I don't want 20,000 people to see my ad. Right. Because I'm limiting, you know, the opportunity, but I've had people tell me that doesn't matter. Does it matter? Um, I'm fine with being it does, wrong, but I'm no, still it keep does, doing it. It does. It does. <laughs> it does. But the answer is is up your budget. <laughs> I mm. mean, I mean that, yeah, that's it's, fair. Look, because when your budget is X, but there are a million sure, searches right. for that yeah. thing, you know, and you might not be able to necessarily you, support capturing that, right? Because if you have good ads running, right, and you have a high conversion rate, right, you may not be. You may. Your budget could be whatever, but if you can't service well, right. capturing 50% of the leads, mm-hmm. you probably don't want to have your ads built around capturing 50% of the, the sure. searches, right? Right. Well, but that should be, the goal should be able to get there because right. you should be able to build from it. You should be able to, to optimize on a level and convert on a level yeah. that lets you grow and then increase your budget and you know, sure. get to that point where you're able to. But if someone comes to me and said, boy, I'm just not getting enough leads. And I look and I see hundred percent capture rate, right. like it tells me a completely different story. Yeah. You're than getting someone. enough leads. You're not s- selling. Yeah. Or I'm not doing a good enough sure. job of you know, targeting the right lead or whatever, but it, okay. but that's a different story than I'm not getting enough but I'm only budgeting $50. Right. You know, and I, and I'm only getting 30%. Sure. Uh, I'm only showing up 30% of the time people are searching for the exact same thing. Yeah. So then it's a budget thing. I'll get asked from, you know, different people. Cause I'll have this conversation with different business owners and industries and stuff from time to time. And they're like, well, well how much do you spend on ads? And we spend a freaking ridiculous amount on, on ads. Um, even with having, particularly here in Virginia, even with having, organically great um, yeah. ratings and rankings. Right, right. Um, we still invest heavily in ads and at yeah. all my locations we do as well. I think it's an important part of our business. Yeah. Um, it's a very competitive business. Mm-hmm. Um, but people are asking me about that. They're like, Oh my God, like I can't afford to spend that. And I think, well, 
sure, I used I couldn't at first either. This right. has been something that sure. has grown with us over the years. Sure. Um, you know, from fifty dollars a day to whatever we're at now at this point. And mm-hmm. so I think the important thing for people to understand is that just because my budget could be a million dollars a day, yeah. I'm not gonna spend a million dollars a day on ads if the the market isn't there to support that from a, a search standpoint. Right. Right. Because again, right. you're paying per click. Mm-hmm. And, you know, ideally you're trying to get that cost per click down as low as possible. Sure. Um, but if your systems are built right and you're you're able to convert a high number of these things, you know, and depending on the 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 price point, you know, of your product or your service, yeah. you know, it's a seven dollar click may be completely worth it. You know, you're another particular industry. It might be a dollar click is, is what's worth it. And mm-hmm. so sure. don't let blanket conversations with other business people who are doing this, oh, yeah. you know, get you pissed off with your web guy or your pay-per-click manager yeah. because you're like, Oh, I'm spending four fifty three a click. Well, is, <laughs> is, is that actually a deal? Yeah. Is that right. actually right? I mean, yeah, for sure. That's something for people sure. got to think about. Well, this guy's yeah. getting my buddy, you know, 99 cents a click. Well, yeah. What is he actually doing? Like is, and is that, is that good or is that actually bad? Right. I mean, certainly it varies by industry. Sure. I mean, if you're a personal injury attorney, you're spending $25 a click and you're happy <laughs> because right. you know That's that. Crazy. Yeah. Right. I get it. Though. Um, but so, the, so the thing is, um, God, there's there. It, I hear this conversation. I've had yeah. this conversation several times. So, there are so many different ways to advertise on Google too. You think it's all pay-per-click. Well, there's also little things that Google throws in there. Well, Hey, how about also hop on our uh, preferred search network, Mm -hmm. you know? So now when someone searches for dog trainer on YouTube, you'll show Mm -hmm. up. Well, that's a little bit more generic. Someone searching for a dog trainer on YouTube, right. You know, isn't the same as someone who goes to Google says I need a dog trainer. Right. But if your ad pops up and there's a little logo there, you know, and they're looking for dog training videos because they want to learn how to train their own dog. Sure. But they see your ad, they might go, yeah, let me, let me just see what it would cost to have someone else do it. So that's not a good, that's, that's not as good of a lead or a click. So Google might only charge you 30 cents for that. Right. Yeah. So now when I look at your numbers at the end of the month, if I add that extra little search network that includes YouTube. It includes whatever other property Google also yeah. owns. Yeah. You know, you might show up on there. I can get your, I can get your cost per click down right. quickly Sure. In, in, you know, 25% of what you were paying, but you now you're showing up on all these other websites right. and you're only paying 30% or, or 30 cents because you yeah. know, you're not going to get well, as the, quite as good or it's motivated of a lead. Well, sure. And, and not to beat like the carpet cleaning thing over the head, but right. you know, I don't want people to get tired of hearing about dogs, but if I go into Google and I search local carpet cleaning company near me or best carpet cleaner mm-hmm. near me, or I go to YouTube and I search, how do I get red wine out of the carpet? Right. Those are two different mm-hmm. people. Yep. You know, the guy looking for how do I get red wine out of the carpet is going to be a much tougher sell than yeah. the person who is specifically looking for a service yep. provider. They've already decided I'm, I'm paying someone to come do right. this. So they, yeah. yeah. So the person on YouTube yep. may click that ad, but yeah, that sure. makes sense. And it's like, mm-hmm. yeah, well, I want to see this cost, this paper, this cost yeah. per click down. Yeah. Well, yeah. I can do that. Sure. But now if you get someone on the phone or yep. you get that inquiry, yep. the time you're spending on that and the odds of them actually converting to a client who you're going to go out and service their, their home and, and handle their carpet needs. Mm-hmm is much tougher to acquire right? to save that 48 cents yep. on a click that now got you a full house carpet. Yep. You know, right. And there job. are ways to see if that's, if that's happening. That's if good. your pay-per-click guy is kind of cheating a little bit and, sure. you know, putting you out there, all of a sudden we, we look at conversion rates. Yep. So, you know, I'm getting just as, you know, uh, I'm paying less per click, but my phone calls, I'm getting the same number of clicks. Yep. I'm paying a lot less but my phone calls have been cut in half. Yeah. You know, oh, okay. Well, that's you know, your conversion rate. Sure. has gone way down because you're not getting as good of a click or as yeah. good of a lead or as motivated as the And lead. that's again where it comes back to the importance of working with, you know, a pro yeah. who understands this stuff. Right. These are just impossible. Right. You cannot be running your HVAC company well and at mm-hmm. the same time 
be proficient at all this stuff and be interpreting the data as often as you need to, to make sure that you're being effective with yeah. it. Like you get, you have to get a pro. So let's, let's do this. We could nerd this up forever. Well, um, Cause this is actually like pretty exciting to me. Yeah. Um, but let's, I'd love to leave the listeners with, you know, two or three things that every business owner, I don't care what level of business they're at, you know, whether they're just getting started, whether they're a year or two in 10 years in, you know, if they're not doing two or three things that they should be doing from a website standpoint, you know, uh, pay-per-click marketing, whether it's on social media, Google, something like that. What are a couple of things that like everybody should be doing, learning more about mm -hmm. finding somebody to help them with that, that's easy to implement? Right. So I, w the number one thing I would say, um, well, let me just say this first. Uh, I, I, I was, we were just finishing up with this talking about like, uh, hiring someone to do, you oh, know, yeah. all right. So I'm not a big business book person. I'll yeah. listen to it on tape or watch it on YouTube, but I'm not a reader. Sure. But one of the best business books I ever did read was E-Myth. And oh, I don't perfect. know yep. I could grab it, but just you're either working in your business or on your business. And, and I, and I'm a victim of this right now. And I literally, the four hour drive here was all me thinking, how do I get out of my business yeah. so I can keep working on my business yeah, 100%. and not be a practitioner and, and be an operator instead. Yeah, feel that. But, um, doesn't mean you don't need an education in all these, all these different fields. So from a web perspective, if you're a business owner, I, I would say the number one thing you can do is start producing content. Um, and it doesn't have, I mean, social media for sure. sure. Um, but I would say blog on your website. Okay. And that may surprise people because if I'm a carpet cleaner or if I'm a contractor or a plumber or whatever, a blog on a plumber site right. seems like who's going to read, well, you're missing the point. Because right. Understood. the point of a blog is to attract, um, if you can get organic traffic through it, great. Yep. You know, how to get red wine out of your carpet. Yeah. I mean, what are the 10 questions you get as a business owner yeah. that you answer every single day? The questions you get, write a blog post on it. That'll do a couple different things. It'll, it might attract traffic from someone who says, how do I, sure. get, you know, red wine out of a carpet, but because you're searching in Hampton roads or in Roanoke or wherever you are, instead of, you know, carpet land or, or whatever the, the major brand you as the local practitioner may show up in that Google result. Okay. Your blog post might show up because Google in their algorithm, you know, prefers local, yeah. but they also prefer authority. Sure. So yep, 100%. In, in the SEO game, we always talk about your website having authority, yeah. which that's why it takes time. Yep. You, you can't just show up with a website and be an authority. Right. You can't do it. You, that's why you need to build over time. And a blog helps you establish authority okay. at, on whatever it is that you do. Yep. And if you're a plumber and you have a blog with you know, how to install this, how to prevent that and how to, you know, wh weatherproof your home, all these how to things that questions that you hear a hundred times a sure. day. If you've got a blog that answers all those questions, Google notices that. Right. And so if you're a business owner, I mean, the value of Google to any business that is just, it's huge. It's crazy. Get on it guys. It's crazy how much Google controls everyone's business. And the thing too with Google, I think it's a huge point for everybody on here. Like regardless of industry, yeah. Google my business costs you nothing. Nothing. It's literally free. Mm -hmm. And so when you wonder, you know, you go on to to use Google because everybody uses Google and you open up Google Maps and you know, you type in where you're going and you're when that pops up, you see four or five businesses that are in your industry that pop up on there and you weren't even looking for them. But because mm -hmm. they're surrounding yep. what you're headed to, the restaurant you're going to or doctor's office or whatever, yeah. they're popping up. You're like, what the hell? Well, they're just doing what you can do too. Mm -hmm. It's free. Yeah. It's free. Yep. And, and then it, there's everything else you can do on there too is free. It's actually becoming, it's almost, it's its own social yeah. network on the, the Google My Business as far as posting and, yeah. and video and pictures mm -hmm. and engagement. And like the more people that play, yep. Google wants to reward. Yeah. 
seemingly. Yeah. And, and you're right. It's free. And, and so many businesses will go into Google my business and they'll set it up with their, you know, they'll put the name in there, the address, the phone number, their logo, add a few pictures and they're done. No, yeah. <laughs> there's so much. If, right. if Google gives you the opportunity to put more information in there, use every opportunity. Because sure. if you don't think that Google looks at that information when it comes to ranking a website for someone that searches for, for a business like yours, sure. you're wrong. Yeah. I mean, they look at that, that. How active are you? If you're a dormant business, you're not an authority on anything. Yeah. You know, if you're not getting reviews, if you're not getting you know, people searching, uh, clicking on your phone number to make a call. If you're not getting people looking for, you know, the, uh, the directions to get to your business, yeah. you know, if, if Google doesn't see that traffic. Yeah. And they package know, it really doing. nicely for you every month. They send you and they tell you, yeah. this is how many people called yeah. you through Google, my business. This yep. is how many people got directions. This is how many people searched for you. Mm-hmm. Jeez. I got an email yesterday. I couldn't believe it. Um, Hey Josh, American express appreciates you. Uh, you were referred by 47 card holders last month. Like, huh? Uh-huh. Yeah. What? And like you, all these things end up being intertwined, you know, and everybody's worried. <laughs> well, I won't go down that path, but like, oh, there's microchips in the shot. Don't get the vaccine. <laughs> you know, all this stuff. <laughs> like, Mother, father, if you're worried about being tracked, they track you right there. It's, it's in it's, your pocket, um, like in your pocket, in your arm. Who cares if you're stressed honestly, about that? But I, I won't go that. I route. want them right to track me because it makes so many things so much easier for me. Like I love at the end of the month, and I might be a little weird sure. for this, but I love at the end of the month when I get my report to see, because I allow them to track everywhere, yeah, sure. <laughs> everywhere yep. I go. Ooh, look at this map. Look where I went. Oh, yeah. I forgot that I went over there. And allow or Everything. not, it's being done anyway. It's just, yeah. you allow it. Then they're going to let you know a little summary of it. Yeah. My thing is I'll even go as far. And then I want to know number two, like throw a chip in me. I don't mm-hmm. got to carry a wallet. Whatever. I roll in the grocery store. Yeah, I walk out with my stuff. Yeah. The door just scans me. If yeah. you can do it for the car going hundred miles an hour down 95 yeah. and they can scan me, take the picture, send me the bill or the toll, whatever. Hit yeah. me up on the groceries, bro. Yeah. Let me get out the grocery store. No yeah. line. Amazon you just, has those. I got my credit now, right? card on the chip. We're set. Yeah. I don't want to put a microchip in myself because God forbid, like I accidentally stick a finger in a socket, get electrocuted. Then it's <laughs> lights out for me. <laughs> well, you'd have to get a new chip. Yeah, it's a it, new it chip, would, man. It, it's it would easy. just, it would short They're that one out. They're giving them out for free right now, bro. Yeah. You know, you got to work. Yeah. Right down there at the Walgreens. <laughs> Walgreens. Just to make that appointment. You're <laughs> yes. set. Man, I, that's going to be a story for another time. Cause I've got a story about that. But anyway, um, all right. So, so establish so authority. I, you got to get some content. Authority. To establish content. authority. Yeah. And then it, so much of that stuff is all repurposable. Sure. Uh, I, you know, you put it on your yeah. blog, but then you also put it on Facebook and then you've got a great image that comes out of it. Put that on your Instagram, but just content, it, content, it has content. to, yeah, it has to get out. Um, and then social, I mean, social is part of that, but also I would, I would say the other side of social is having more than just, um, quotes sure. more than just, you know, um, uh, you guys do a great job with videos, like before and after videos. Thank you, appreciate and that. I think that's, um, that was one of the things that Nick did with off leash canine at the very beginning yeah. that I think was just genius that even though the quality didn't like, it doesn't matter. Right. <laughs> it, yeah. It's just, there's now there's this massive volume of before and after videos yeah. And it's just common practice. Everybody just does it because, right. you know. And the thing that's it's funny is what a win. The, the quality of the dog training is is tremendous as it was 10 years yeah. ago, as yeah. it is today. Sure. But you look at um, just as phones have changed over the last 10 oh, years, because yeah. everybody's out here recording with their phones. Yeah. And now, I mean, people are out there just with an iPhone in their pocket. It's got built-in stabilization, all this stuff. You think they're running around with a camera crew yeah. doing things, and it's just some joker holding the phone. Yeah. And, and, the, and the, the picture quality and all this stuff, mm-hmm. I mean, we're not Steven Spielberg, but literally with the phone in your pocket, you can do some crazy stuff. Yeah. I am Steven Spielberg. Well, you do put it together for us. That <laughs> is the truth. You do. I think if you can give your social media properties of, give them a, a voice, yeah, sort sure. of a perspective, sort of a personality. Um, I think that's huge. I mean, when you go through 
YouTube or wherever. And, you know, I was, I, my, I had a little part in my car, uh, something in the engine. I got it a little check engine light. So I put on my little, you know, that little reader thing yeah. to see what I got. I, I've got this bizarre looking, you know, whatever part that I ordered on Amazon, it came, but I had to watch like two, three, four videos of like, okay, how am I going to install this dang thing right. in my car? I should just have someone do it, but it, you know, I, I appreciate the attempt. Yeah, I I just, but, but it, you see a lot of the different channels that are out there. Um, person out like some of them i just thought god this guy's you know all he does is ford you know uh you know, engine rebuilds and this and that and the, yeah. but what an amazing page he's got That's you know cool. his youtube channel like just because of the personality that yeah. kind of comes through no reason no reason nobody else can do that anyone else can do that anybody can anyone can do that and somebody oh it's just not for me and Everyone's got a everyone's got a personality. Everyone's they got do. a story. Or or find someone in your office that does. Right, right. And, and just say, look, you know, document. You know, Gary Vaynerchuk does a great job of kind of pushing that point. Just document everything. That's all you gotta yep, do. For just sure. document. Just yeah. document what you do. We've talked about that a lot too. Love it. And you know, it's just a it anybody can do this clearly. Yeah. You know, I mean, if I can do it, literally anybody can do it. But if I just, if I'm looking for a dog trainer or if I just kind of stumble onto your yeah. guys' videos and I can tell that there's a personality there, sure. that there's, there's a person, there are people with feelings and, and passion. Yeah. And I, I'm not even going to look for anybody like right. that. I'm already sold because I already trust you because I like yeah. you because I like that, you know? And you know, I think that's a really good point. Cause one thing for me, and again, I think this goes cross industry, you know, for, yeah. for anybody, but I, one of my favorite things to do is, is go through our reviews and I'll yeah. go back through like old reviews from like five, six years ago. Um, and it'll spur, you know, I'm like, man, I should reach out to them, see how that dog's doing. You know, mm. I loved that dog. Yeah. We had such a good time. Yeah. What a cool client. It might yeah. be two, three years since personally I spoke with them. Yeah. Um, and they still hear from us monthly. I mean, we have newsletters and, sure. and different things, but uh, maybe, Two or three weeks ago, and so funny you just mentioned this. I was going through looking at our reviews uh, here in in Virginia, and I think what triggered that was we've just recently gone over, I think like the five hundred mark. Yeah, we might be approaching six hundred now wow. here in Hampton Roads, which Fantastic. is insane. Yeah, and it's such a testament to my trainers and and the, and the team. I mean, they just do such a fantastic job. I mean, it is so hard to get a review. It is. And it is so hard to get somebody to take the time. Now, people will say something bad in a heartbeat. Get a positive You know, review. which makes me want to beat hard. my chest even yeah. more because we right. just really don't have that. Yeah. I and mean, you can't make everybody happy all the time. Sure. But, you know, to have that many reviews built up, like I'm so proud of the team and what we've done. Mm -hmm. And as I'm reading through the reviews, and you just made the comment about, you know, a personality. Mm -hmm. I think reading through our reviews, any client who's researching a dog trainer and, and starts going through that, they, they could spend five to 10 minutes scrolling for months, for years. doesn't matter. Yeah. Just randomly picking and reading. And there is a very distinct personality to our business. And I've never thought about it that way mm -hmm. until you just made that comment. Mm -hmm. And I got that hair on the back of my neck thinking yeah. about it because I know that person yep. of that personality. And what I mean by that is, Seven, eight years ago, I was training 90% of the dogs. And so, yeah, of course I knew the personality behind sure. it. It was, it's me. Sure. Mm. Not now. I mean, we've got dozens of trainers and they're all way more talented than me <laughs> and do a much better job yeah. than me. Yeah. And, but the personality, it's not me anymore, but it's the same from a quality standpoint and experience. It's better. It's mm -hmm. better than it was, but it's a very clear, distinct personality. Yeah. And that, that just messed me up. That comment you just made. So now you give you them know? the license to when yeah. they're shooting their video, instead of starting with the super wide shot of like, Hey everybody, it's Scott from off leash canine mm -hmm. training. This is, you know, Daisy, the two year old, blah, blah, right. blah, blah, blah. Um, now maybe it's a, a tighter shot where now, you know, when you're scrolling through Facebook and a video pops up that's someone's face yeah. versus a wide yeah, shot, sure. uh, you know, it's more inviting. Yeah. You're right here. Oh, it catches my attention. You know, that's good. Same, same spiel, 
just yeah. a little bit tighter. Um, audio is always so important. Yeah. So yeah. the audio is going to be a lot better is another nice benefit of this. But right up close with that dog, let's see what this dog can do. It's right. you know, yeah, licking sure. all over your face and everything. And everyone's loving it and smiling as yeah. they're watching it. You know, and then you kind of get into that, but that that would help communicate personality as well. Yeah, that's awesome. That's good so, I, I, doing this stuff isn't really that hard. Sure, it's just doing it is hard. Like and being consistent with it, and that's where people fall off. You know, because I think like, so oh, many do people, you know, it's like, oh, I've been throwing money towards these ads, and yeah. I saw nothing in a week, yeah. and we cancel it. Yeah, you know, that's that's really tough. Yeah, um, where are we at, Jonathan, on time? Uh, so we're. We're at about 45 minutes. Okay, cool. I'm going to wrap us. Um, you know, Scott, I like I said, we could go on and on about this, you know, forever. I, I think you've added a tremendous amount of value uh, this morning to people and and to be helpful and stuff. And I know for a fact the value that you've added to to our organization. I can't thank you enough, you know, for that. Yes, I I know it's a transaction. There is a there is a service provided. Yeah. There is a bill. But our relationship has expanded beyond that. And I really value that and appreciate it. Yeah. Um, I view you much more as a partner rather than a, a service provider. Yeah. Um, I think that's important for for anybody that you do this level of, of business with. What are um, some good ways for people to connect with you, whether on social or website, if they're interested in learning more about you know, what you guys do. Sorry, dog world. Yeah. Um, he's on lock with us, but yeah. um, so, for a lot of other people out there, there might be great conversations to be had. Absolutely. So the, uh, my overall group is DC web group. Mm -hmm. So the DC it's DC web group.com, but canine cloud is part of that. Um, my old SEO agency, Scott McKellum agency is part of that. Um, and then there's, you know, we have a, a, a separate division that, you know, specializes in business reviews and sure. helping businesses get reviews and, you know, so I'll, DC web group got dot com and then you can kind cool. of go from there. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the dog trainer world, I'm, I'm on lock with, with awfully right. have You've been so good to me. And I, I, again, I, I look at myself and I, I said from the very beginning, I think I had two off leash clients when I built the, you know, the website for canine cloud yeah. and was just like. You know, we look at ourselves as a, uh, as a partner in your business, because I just knew from the very beginning that I, I wasn't going to be able to come into this as, you know, oh yeah, you know, the most experienced, the, you know, sure. the best results and all that. I'm going to come in. If, if I show up as a partner, then I can grow yeah. with them. I don't have to be the best from the very beginning. Sure. I'm a partner. We're going to figure this out together. Yeah. Um, and, and because that's the, the truth of where I was when yeah, I started with, with off leash. So I still kind of, I still kind of roll that way. When I talk to, uh, talk to an owner I, and I hear like, Oh my God, we're going to have a record month. We just absolutely killed it. Like, I feel like I did that 100%. Um, just as much. And I haven't touched a dog, right. <laughs> you know, and I'm not responsible for that, but I feel like, it validates you what I play do. play a key role in that, though. But that's and where can, I get my wins. You can wins. provide opportunity. Yeah, that's right? where I get my wins. Yeah, Off Leash Family, if you happen to, to listen and, you know, you're yeah. not working with Scott, you should consider it. Well, they probably uh, are. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> I awesome. Think I, I love it. I think I got most uh, most of them. That's but, awesome. That's um, good. But, yeah, yeah it's uh, – I'm – caninecloud.com or dcwebgroup.com. That's awesome, Scott. Yeah. I appreciate you. So guys, look, biggest things, you know, you want to make sure that you're becoming, you're creating yourself as that authority, you know, a blog, easy thing to set up. Don't yeah. get stressed out by the terminology. Mm -hmm. Don't get stressed out. It sounds like very 1996. Yeah. Like it's, it's effective mm -hmm. and there's a lot of benefit to it and it's easy to do. Um, I'm, Going to start working on it myself. You've mm -hmm. only been telling me for three years to only, do it. Only um, been telling you. And, you know, we can always get better, so we're going to work on it. And, you know, number two, that the last thing that he dropped that I think is just complete gold, mm -hmm. give your social a personality, yeah. you know, and and if if it bores you to do it and it bores you to watch yourself, yeah. which a lot of us feel like, find that personality in your office, in your space, mm -hmm. you know, in, incorporate maybe your kids into your business, you know, it, 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 there's yeah. so many things you can do that can create a vibe and a tone and a personality. Um, and there's so many resources out there that are free. Yeah. And all you got to do is, is take the time, set it up. And so many of these things will just do the work for you mm -hmm. in the background and you don't have to worry about it. So Scott, you dropped bombs this whole time. Really, really appreciate you coming in. Can I drop one more? Yeah, please go for it. Please people. 
stop being afraid of the social media <laughs> channels that are out there. Oh, yeah. Stop talking. It, stop calling it Tiki Talk. Oh gosh. Yes. <laughs> or the TikTok. Yeah. Or like, like just adapt because. I remember when Facebook came out yeah. and it was like, oh, I'm not, a, it was like a badge of honor to not be on sure, it. Right. And now you're just the Costing biggest Facebook person. Now you're dollars. wasting hours and hours. And hours. Like just stop being judgmental of the medium. Yes. <laughs> yep. I love TikTok as a 50 year old man. I love, Look. love to, my wife and I will sit up at night and just watch TikToks. Together I can't even go on that hour. Most. My one of my best friends, Mark Easy. Rosati. I love you, Mark. He's out in California. <laughs> uh, Mark, forever, forever. He'll never not do it. He's like, I saw the uh, video on the face page. <laughs> I saw on the face page. I, I, was, I was on Joe Betts' face page, and that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. I don't even know if Mark is actually on <laughs> Facebook right now. I think he just hacks in through his wife's page. So yeah. enjoy yeah. the face page, Mark. Yeah, Everybody else, get your shit together on it. All right. Thanks, Jonathan. Take us out. <laughs>